welcome to Radio Waves by Totterbert. If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. In front of us we have the Eaton Grundig Edition Satellite. It's an AM, FM, long wave, short wave with single sideband and airband portable radio. I got this for $110 shipped from eBay and here it is. Satellite Grundig Edition. Picture. There you go. Side, we have some bullet points. We'll go over a lot of these things together. Let's see the side here has frequency chart for the frequency nuts. Yeah. The back has a little blur about the radio, how good it is. And then they got features right there. You can just kind of look at those. Kind of slowly go through there. Okay. So we'll try to hit on most of those. All right. So I took everything out of the box because it's be a pain to do on camera. So let's go see what we get. 110 bucks. So we get an AC adapter. All right. <laughs> I always wanted one of these. <laughs> That's great. Let's see what kind of this looks. Hey, it's a flow. <laughs> it's pretty popular in a lot of it. radios. I think it's a linear. It's a very heavy. Um, six volt, 500 milliamp hour. So yeah, it's probably a linear supply. So it doesn't affect your AM signal. So you don't have to worry about putting a ferrite core on this. Nice. Also use this to charge the batteries. The radio will charge batteries. We'll talk about that too. All right, we get a cool carrying pouch. Pretty nice, you know, I like that. Simple, works. It came in this little plastic tray. Uh, the radio didn't have any protection besides this, so I don't know if my radio was used or not. I have a feeling it might have been, or my, this radio might be a refurb. You know, $110, you gotta wonder why it's a good deal. And I'll tell you why I think mine was, so. All right, let's get to the manual. Yes, the manual. I wanted to go over a few things in here. This is the manual they give you. It's pretty clear and concise and to the point. And there were a couple features I thought I'd hit on. Um, there's ways to change things with these function keys. Um, with the radio off, you can do that. Here we go. Ch you can change the stepping for those guys who want to know if it does 9 or 10. It does. And the FM band, you can change to four different styles, 87.5, 64, 76, or 87 as the start. So that's pretty nice. Um, this is also nice, the browse feature where, you know, you tune, it can stop on the station that it finds, it can save it, or it can delay for five seconds and move on to the next station. So you can change that, which I found really handy because I was tuning for airband. <laughs> I walk away and then all of a sudden it would find something. I'd run over to the radio and move on. I'd forget, couldn't see what frequency it found. It was pretty funny. So yeah, I turned that off. <laughs> um, charging time, this is important. Um, it, it teach you how to, uh, you know, how to figure out the charging time. So it actually is a timer based charging feature, which isn't too bad to talk about um, how many hours equals how many milliamp hour batteries you have. So and I'll have to see if I can find that in the book. But yeah, pretty neat, pretty clear and concise. And you'll have no problem with this. And let's just talk more about the buttons. Let's see, they've got anything out the chart here, setting the alarms. Yeah, you got four alarms on this radio. Amazing. Um, here we got the frequency steps, um, how they tune, uh, the fast. I believe this looks the fast. Step in there, there you go. And then, um, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, it's like I said, it's a good thing that you get to see this. Here's the uh, fine tuning. Pretty awesome, uh, especially when you're in single sideband. It tunes in 10 hertz stepping. It's really good. Okay, so there's storing stations. We'll get into storing stations a little bit. I don't wanna go crazy on that. There's a lot of copy paste you can do, which is pretty handy, actually. Um, there's some ranges. We're talking about the different FM ranges again. Squelch. I want to make sure you guys know that it has squelch on all the bands, which is interesting. You can add squelch to the AM and, and the FM and everything. So I thought that was pretty neat. There's single sideband using synchronous detector. I haven't really tested this much, so I can't give you my opinion yet on this, but maybe with a band scan in the future we will. So I think this pretty much covers what I wanted to look at in the book. Yeah, it's pretty much that charging feature. The charging feature said for every 100 milliamp hours and your battery is equal to one hour. So if you had 1100 cells, they would be 11 hours. Or if you had 2300 cells in there, it would be 23 hours to charge. So it's a slow charging process, um, but that's what that was at. Okay, so let's put that book aside, get to the radio. Here we go, the satellite. Let's go to dimensions. Uh, six and three quarter inches across, four inches high, and a depth of one and five eighths of an inch. That includes this back antenna here. It kind of just sticks out in the open. There's no stowed position besides that. So, all right, so let's go ahead and size comparison here. Let me bring this up a little bit. 
Uh, let's see, I have handy my CC Pocket. Give you an idea, the CC Pocket's probably a little bit taller. Yeah, a little taller. Give you an idea there. Case depth. Yeah. Still, this radio does quite a bit for its size. I'm actually very happy with its size. Stack of cards. Iron Man. <laughs> and then it's little baby brother, the Traveler 3. Yeah. Uh, you're going to find out a couple things about this radio versus this radio. Um, <laughs> this little guy still performs awesome. I mean, I, this is a great radio. Uh, amazing. Okay. So there we go. Size comparison. Let's go over the tons of features this radio has. I'm going to bring this back down and we'll get up close and personal. Okay, features of the radio. On the left-hand side, we have an antenna jack, which just works really well. And when I do my evening band scan, we're going to go to a different location where my wire goes outside and hopefully get good results because I had this thing hooked up and I was getting CW. I was getting all kinds of ham activity. Just really awesome. A DX local antenna switch there for your uh, onboard uh, antenna. And then we have a headphone jack, which is really good. Um, Plugged-in headphones. A lot of bass. So if you love bass, this radio does deliver. Um, just amazing uh, on the bass. And then the AM is like more of a low tone, which isn't bad. I've come to like that. Uh, here we have the AC adapter in. DC volt. This is six volts there going in. The front of the radio, we have a speaker here. I try to judge the size. I think it's like a two-inch speaker. Two and a quarter-inch speaker, probably. Right around there. It's a metal grill. It says Eaton. Lightning bolt, yeah. Garnet edition satellite. Over here we got the power button. Also access your sleep function. We got a lock button to lock down the radio. Here's the LCD screen. You saw it light up. There's a button here to hit light. I can light that up. So there's like different uh, settings here. I'll put on a medium. A um, little dusty here. It's a little dust magnet, but that's okay. So there we go. There's an LCD. You can tell there's an alphanumeric there. Almost. It's going to have RDS. A battery level indicator. We have the clock running right now, a 24-hour clock, and then day of the week. It's the second day of the week, it says. So that's nice. Okay, let's go over buttons. Lots of buttons. <laughs> so you got seven across here. Those, those are your function keys with the power off. Those first four work really well for that. And I think there were some other options with these extras. But these are mainly your preset uh, keys to get to your preset modes. So you'll be using these a lot. You'll find yourself using those all the time. And it works out pretty good, actually. I actually like that method. I uh, got a reset button hole there. Uh, here we have... Um, time zone button and a line in button function. We have a copy paste feature button. That's for your memory handling and a race button for memory handling and an edit button for actually uses edit to add names for your pages, which I'll show you pretty neat. And then the light function button, which you're able to toggle the light on and staying on, which is great. Um, so you got the three settings of light and turning it off. So right now it's just going to stay on the whole time while we do our review. So that's great. We have a numeric keypad one through zero. Zero also acts as your long wave, medium wave band select. Here we have an FM air band select. And then we have the AM, which is your short wave select. Here we have the wide and narrow bandwidth selects, which is really awesome. You get quite a few choices when you're in SSB and out of SSB in regular short wave and AM. And we'll show you those. We have stereo, of course, mono mode and FM. Here we have the upper lower sideband mode button. Also actuates RDS modes. Here we have a sync, synchronous detect button and the single sideband button initiator and the RDS mode turning it off. So if you don't want to see it, you can turn the RDS mode off. Um, here's a page time. So this is set the time when the power's off. This is to get to your memory pages, the memory function, or toggling back to your frequency select. So we'll show you that. And then we have the up and down tuning buttons and an auto up, auto seek down. And of course, they even have the ATS storage system, which I'm not going to mess with. Because it kind of, it's not as fun as doing it yourself. You know, when you're programming yourself, it's great. But doing it this way for seeking is good. So right-hand side, we have some more things. We have a line in and out jack. So you saw this one here says line in. That's how you turn it on for line in. Otherwise, it defaults to line level out. Love that. Here's a volume analog control. Like I said, the headphones were a great experience. Uh, low le no level, no low level hiss, no noise floor with the volume, which is really good. I'm glad they did this. It's really handy. Here we have a tuning knob. And it has different modes, which I'll show you when we turn on the radio. It has a fast, a slow, and a stop mode. And it also has squelch when you push this in. So it actuates the radio by clicking that in, along with tuning the radio. Pretty sweet. Uh, here we have on the top, uh, just a silver, you know, silver black color. On the back, we have the antenna. This antenna actually, let me show you a 
comes up and it pivots and it has this little elbow and it clears the case and we'll show you when I set that up. This extends out to 32 inches. Awesome. On the back of the radio we have Eaton with this little flip out uh, stand here which is pretty tight which I'll just leave it right now. <laughs> uh, vented case. We have the battery compartment. I believe it's a uh, captured door. Yep, captured door. It takes four AA batteries. I just have regular, whoops, getting there, little dude. I have regular elk lines in there at the moment. Okay, pretty simple to use. And let's go set this down and talk about FM reception. We're at that point. FM reception. This gets an excellent five stars. Yes, five amazing stars. Holy cow. I found about 90 stations. Yes, 90. I, yeah, just, I was, is this in the afternoon too? I was three o'clock in the afternoon, sitting upstairs uh, with it in my you know lap and just, sitting there tuning through the band and yeah I found tons of stations so just amazing so it gets an excellent it's right up there with my Grundig Field BT and right up there with the PRD15 Sanjin um, as some of the ones and, and the EP Pro Seacrane EP Pro those are like the best DSP FM receivers I have and this is right up there with them so king of FM for sure um, selectivity is very good to excellent uh, the reason why it's not excellent is that it did really good all the way up till one of my strongest local stations where it kind of faltered the radio um, actually uh, had an issue with one strong station with bleed over. So uh, that's why it gets that four and a half star rating on the selectivity. Otherwise, it would have been perfect. So yeah, this, this radio is awesome. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Yes, best part. Best part of turning it on. I don't know. I tried to make a little song, but it doesn't want to work. Um, so it's good. This is the antenna. That's pretty cool. The little elbow makes it so it clears the case corner. Let's see if I get that to focus. Yeah, so you can get it straight and it's kind of straight up while it lays flat on the table. Really nice. Then go vertical. Stand it up 32 inches. And we'll go ahead and turn this on. Make sure my volume is down so it's not screaming at us. So, interesting thing. When you hit a button, it doesn't do something right away. It just turns the light on. And you have to hit it again to turn it on. So, it's pretty funny. So, right now we got a little readout. You'll see it has RDS. Right now it's showing stereo, which is cool. Again, uh, there's our clock moves over here, which is nice. So you still get your clock. There's your signal strength indicator. Our frequency, pretty awesome. We're in fast mode right now. So what we're going to do is just uh, turn up the volume. Market strategist Art Hogan on CNBC. And then RDS mode, you hit the button here. Actually, turn RDS to on. So now it's telling us RDS information. Bears radio. And there's a different mode. It's a radio, radio text, maybe. Now this. I'm Nick Soboleski, a select quote agent with a true story that could save you hundreds of dollars a year. A woman named Linda there we just go. called. WCFS. Her husband, Ray, has a $300,000 group life date. insurance policy, but is changing jobs and can't take it with him. Well, I oh, shot out there at the end. I don't know why. Okay, news program type. Okay, so pretty neat. You can see that. Um, let's go uh, do some audio with Totterbird, Radio Totterbird. So we're going to fire that up. It doesn't have RDS, but it does have stereo. So to get to the memory mode, what you do is you first you have direct entry. I could enter in 97.7 if I want right now. I get 9.77, then hit FM. It'll take me right there. But for showing the memory, so right now I'm in. Uh, page one or page zero I know that there's 99 pages and each page has seven so 700 memories <laughs> I mean it's kind of weird how it's done but I, I do like it um, and then you just have the seven you go through so right now we're it's flashing on the station we're on this preset is number seven already so we're gonna go to six which is my Radio Totterbird and for those who don't know what Radio Totterbird is it's a Sony mp3 player hooked up to a C crane FM transmitter 2 transmitting the audio from the YouTube music library to 97.7 megahertz and this radio is receiving it instead so of me plugging it directly in.
four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. <laughs> It gives you a quick idea of the audio test. All right, so let's get on to some of the features. So yes, uh, this has tons of bands. So we can explore, you know, tuning this. You can see on fast mode, it can tune like this. And it's pretty nice. RDS comes up pretty quickly, I noticed. Um, classical music. You can push this in to change the speed slow. So when we tune now, we can micro step this, which is really nice. You can fine tune that FM station if you have to. And then we can go to stop, so nothing tunes when you move the tuning knob. And then there's also squelch. If you press and hold, it has squelch, and you can set the squelch. I don't know why you would squelch the FM, but uh, there it is there. <laughs> um, so it's on every band, which is great. So let's go to the air band. And the greatest thing about this radio, <laughs> this thing deserves a five star on the air band. This is the best air band radio I've ever had in my hands. I sat upstairs again and hit this just seek and it found 20 um, 20 uh, frequencies of activity on it I couldn't believe it before I'd have like maybe four or five this thing found a ton and wow is all I can say just amazing so what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if we can find the activity real quick and what I did is I have uh, memory pages set up to all those frequencies I found so I'm gonna go memory mode and I believe you go up and down here for your memories so this is my second page there's my third page. <laughs> so these two pages, Radio Wave and Todd Rules, <laughs> those are actually shortwave pages, which I'm going to show you. And then here's Air 1, so we'll just go through these. But a lot of this was like plane-to-plane uh, -plane activity. It was awesome. Talking about turbulence, talking about different altitudes. It's on time left, American 2461. Yes. Uh, Chicago in 8, uh, 390 is with the other 12 for 11. We have Victor... So yeah, pretty live activity here. Just go through them real fast, see if anything happens. Just show you what I found. These are all frequencies of activity in my area. And I live near Chicago, Illinois, so near O'Hare Airport. That's probably why I get all this activity. Which is pretty awesome. So if you want an airband radio, an FM radio, you buy this one. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. Amazing radio. Let's go through them real quick here. Look at my other chatter. We're getting quite a bit actually. This is an evening, and typically I don't get much chatter. So we're going to go up a page, air two. A lot of noise here. You can probably squelch it out. So let's go through these. Uh, 
and I got so I had seven, seven, and then five that I found. Just amazing. And I'm going kind of quick here, otherwise you wait and see if anything comes up. Nope, just missed the transmission there. Okay, so that gives you an idea of the airband. And the cool thing is you go back to your frequency. Um, you can tune it manually if you wanted to. Or you just hit this button. And it flies. This thing scans really quick. You can see it's scanning there. Just amazing. And uh, yeah, that's how I found the activity. I just, I just hit the button, let it go, then I wrote down what frequency it was, and boom. Just This just amazes me on the airband. I couldn't believe what I was finding with this thing today. It was just fantastic. So that's how that works. Pretty awesome. Like I said, you got all these pages to play with. You can put any memory on each. You can have AM, FM, shortwave, airband, single sideband, all on the same page if you want. So, all right, we're going to go play with some shortwave. So let me go ahead and hook up a wire. I don't know if it's going to help much down here. I'm going to do an evening one upstairs, like I mentioned, on my wire outside. We'll get better reception, but we'll see what we can find on shortwave. So what I did is I have shortwave here. So then we'll uh, enter... So we're going to scan. Whoops. I'm in the page mode. Did you guys see all those pages? Um, so I have it set up to where it just jumps up at a thousand each step. As you can see there. What I'm going to do is go to frequency mode. Make sure it says weekday. Okay. It says weekday. That means you're in the frequency mode. We'll go ahead and tune up. Man, if we take this back. There's a slight soft uh, muting, which is kind of annoying. Uh, you can still get things done. You just got to go slower. That's all I've noticed. Okay, I'll take it back up. Like I said, it scans really fast, find stations pretty quick. I'm pretty happy with that. When it comes to ham radio, um, you just pretty much have to find the frequencies the hams operate on, go to those frequencies, then slowly dial them in, which I'll we'll try here in a moment. And then uh, and then we'll talk about the AM a little bit, and then we'll get final thoughts on this when radio. You get that one organization that does the exit polling, they only give you demographic breakdown. They say, well, this... Yeah, pretty awesome. I love it. Yeah, it's amazing on shortwave too. This is just a, a great radio for the 110 bucks. $110 gets you a pretty amazing FM shortwave single sideband radio. Let's see if we get up to 7,000 here, then we can see if we can find any hams. And then we'll uh, go to AM really fast here. I do love this inverted back uh, lit LCD. I do find that attractive. It looks really good. So it's finding quite a bit. Must be a good evening. Sorry, I'm going quick. I'm just trying to get to 7,000. <laughs> I keep running into stations. It's great. So, yeah, we'll get there, and we'll see what we can find. Actually, no, there it is. Okay. So, bring it down. Let's go fast.
This is a tedious part, but once you find it, you can just put it into a preset row. Tune it up here and see if we can find another station. And I'll show you the single sideband and uh, we'll go from there. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. So, say if you need a single sideband, you'd hit this right here. Sync. Well, actually, I hit sync by mistake. Whoops. Okay, we don't want sync. Single sideband. And then you have to hit the button here until it says fine. And it gives you the 10 hertz stepping. You can really fine tune the voice and the CW, which is really nice. And if I have a video with the hams, I'll have it up here. I'll link it there. You guys can check that out. So I did record some ham activity earlier. I should precede this video. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put AM real fast. There is a reason. Turn off the single sideband by hitting the button again. And put the antenna down. So there's a reason why I waited on the AM band. I'm very upset with this radio with the AM. Um, and disappointed. Uh, it does everything so well. The shortwave is fantastic. The FM is amazing. The airband like this impresses me to no end. And then we get to the medium wave band, which I thought would be oh, this radio would be the ultimate radio. But the AM on this radio is like <laughs> I'll be honest with you right now. This little traveler right here blows it away on the AM band during the day. It's just it, night and day difference. At night, this does okay. But still, this radio will pick it up clear and crisper. It's 1180, we can go 740. So we got, uh, that's CFZM, Toronto, Ontario. We can go to Atlanta, see if we can get anything. Okay, music on 750, that's interesting. I usually don't hear that. Okay. Or oh, did I didn't hit the, damn it. <laughs> I didn't hit the, uh, let me get, okay, hit the AM button. So there's WSB Atlanta. Uh, let's see if we can go to 50 Colorado. Okay, so yeah, we'll do some daytime band scans on the AM so you can see how uh, it doesn't perform as well as I thought it would. At nighttime, it does open up a little bit, but that's because most radios do that. Um, this radio, again, even at night, isn't as good as some of my other radios. Um, just really fell on its face, and I asked the seller about it, and they said, well, we don't know. You could always send it back. I'm like, I don't want to send this back. This thing's too good on shortwave. <laughs> So we're going to turn this off. All right. So my thoughts on the Eaton Grundig Edition satellite. AM, FM, long wave, short wave with single sideband, airband, portable radio for 110 bucks. Okay. The $110 value, it's really good for the single sideband, short wave capabilities. They're just amazing. It sounds fantastic. Uh, I love the audio. I love the headphone experience. Um, just I love the way you can name your pages uh, of presets. Um, I love this push button actuating the slow, the fast, squelch. Uh, that is just really handy to have. Separate volume control instead of buttons for volume is very nice. The line in and line out, so if you want to record, it's amazing. I love it. And I do want to record more of the audio. I'm into that now. So definitely gets a buy in my book, even though the AM is weak. I mean, I get my local stations, yay. But my semi-locals, they don't come in so great on this radio during the day. And then at night, it's, it's adequate. It's just not fantastic. So... It still gets a recommended buy for me. I don't know if the executive, they improved that AM, or this particular radio right here has an issue with the AM. You guys can let me know, but uh, as we do those daytime band scans, you'll find out. But still, at $110 shipped from Canada, I think it's Radio Canada I got this from, um, it's still a recommended buy all day long. So if you enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up. I appreciate it. If you love this radio, big thumbs up. I think it's probably one of the best single sideband radios I own. And I've owned quite a few single sideband, you know, Skywaves. They just 
they all work similar to this and this just I don't know I really like this one a lot it's really impressing me uh, to subscribe uh, if you love Grundig you love Eaton's I try to get them all collect them all <laughs> gotta get them all I have a G5 Grundig G5 an older model similar button layout uh, that I'll review it's not the greatest condition but it works so that's a good thing uh, you know get stay tuned hit subscribe hit the bell icon get notified um, three comment below what you think about the Grundig edition satellite model do you like this model do you have it uh, do you wish it had other features is my medium wave an issue or is it not so uh, and then of course after hours of Totterbird at Patreon come visit me come check it out and have some fun all right guys thanks for watching take care and we'll see you soon